So this is a rant video. If you don't want to watch this because you don't want to see me rant about something, please just don't watch the rest of this video. Today we're talking about why I hate the word collection. And it's not because I don't think it's a good thing, it's because no one, practically no one that's involved with gated horses uses it correctly. And so I hate when people use it. And yes, this is a rant. Don't feel like you have to watch it. Um, I actually have and went through a stack of books for looking for collection. And uh, there's actually four more that, are, that, are in, that aren't in the stack uh, where those books didn't really mention collection and what it was. So I'm not gonna reference them, but it didn't disagree with me. And I'm just gonna show you guys right here, this whole stack of books all agreed with me, or I agree with them, or however you wanna say it. These books all talk about collection. And let me tell you what collection is not. And in my description, you can see it. Um, oh wait, where did it go? There it is. So here's what collection is. Collection, or this is a quote from an article that I like. Collection is a frequently misunderstood term. It has nothing to do with putting the horse's face on the vertical and everything to do with gathering up your horse's energy to strengthen his body and put brilliance in his gait. That's what collection is. What it is not is it is not about bringing the nose in. And in all of these descriptions, I think one does mention the nose as a result of working on collection, uh, but that's not it. So let's go ahead and look at what collection is um, because it, that is important. I'm gonna rant, but I'm also gonna give you resources on how to get collection and when you should use it. So collection is, this is from an article, link is in the description from happyhorsetraining.com. So it's this idea that the horse is not necessarily having the low head, but that he's lowering the hind end and using the hind end uh, to go up and forward, but not so much forward. Uh, so going forward is, is more balance and strength training. And you can see on the right, through gradual strengthening of the ring of postural muscles, gradual strengthening, which allows the pelvis to tuck increasingly this pair parabola, parabola, I can never know how to say that word, is cantilevered upwards, elevating the head carriage and lengthening the forehand. So the head is up only because the hind quarters are down and it takes shorter steps and the, there's flexion in all of the joints. Here's another version of collection. And you can see as the horse is more collected, the back end of the horse gets lower and lower and the steps get shorter and shorter. And you can see how much it's reaching under. And it's not just reaching under, like how walking horses reach under, it's flexing and taking shorter steps. Where walking horses, when they step under, they actually are loose and not getting collected. They're actually just stretching farther. They don't take more weight on the back end. Uh, and so that's another one. Here's a third version, um, also from that same first, where it shows the inverted, where the head is high, um, but the back is hollow. And it also shows it both ways, both with the nose out and the nose in. And what we typically see with gated horses is that they bring the nose in, but have the head high in incorrectly. The back is hollow. And this is absolutely incorrect. The top version is the correct, where the horse is stepping under. Notice between the top horse and the bottom right, how if you notice the hind leg is stepping under and in, where in the bottom right horse, it's pushing back and it's not really under and, and that hind end, the hip or the croup is not tucked and lowered. If you want actual collection, you have to lower the back end of the horse. That's that's just part of what collection is and it's an integral integral part of it okay because i like books and i have that whole stack of books which again these are the whole stack of books i'm going to be referencing right there all of those books i'm going to be i've looked through them and i'm going to be referencing them and i have a bunch more on my shelf that i didn't go through and they probably say the same thing okay let's just go through it so training strategies for dressage riders by Charles Denufi. This is a, he's a pretty big name in the, the horse world. And uh, again, I just grabbed some dressage books off of my shelf. And meaning and purpose of collection, you can see I've underlined it. I'm going to read it. Collection occurs when the horse shifts his center of gravity towards his haunches. 
In a sense, collection is a relative term. It refers to any change in the horse's tempo depending on the shift of his center of gravity. So, you know, when he shifts backwards, it can look different for different horses. Whenever the horse becomes shorter in length and taller in his posture, his legs lifting higher, therefore with shorter strides than before, he is collected. Collection is relative to the degree to which the horse assumes weight on his haunches. So he's making a distinction that it's not just the head being up, it's the haunches lowering and taking the weight, shifting that weight backwards. Even at a primitive stage of collection, just like early on, by merely slowing the horse, the essence of true collection presents itself because the horse shifts the center of gravity toward his haunches. Get that? The horse shifts his center of gravity toward his haunches. Collection, I love this part of course, collection is not the shortening of the horse's neck by pulling. Let me say that again. Collection is not the shortening of the horse's neck by pulling. A shortened neck may even prevent collection. I, I, everybody needs to put this on their wall, on their trailer. Uh, this needs to be everywhere. Collection is not the shortening of the horse's neck by pulling. A shortened neck may pre even prevent collection. Right there. First book, okay? Book one. Uh, this book I have not read in its entirety, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it because it looks really good. So this is Horse Gates, Balance and Movement by Susan E. Harris, revised edition. I have several pages marked in here, and she has lots of drawings, and she actually has uh, quite a bit of gate uh, drawings in here, which I like, and I think they're very good. Uh, first, I'm going to point out briefly, and we'll talk more about this, this is the dressage pyramid, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but I did highlight it here, uh, and I have other images to show, so don't worry. Collection. This is what she says. Collection is one of the most beautiful of the horse movement qualities. It gives lightness, mobility, and freedom to the horse's movement and makes him appear to dance. Collection is a state of balance in which the horse carries more of his weight on the hindquarters. Gee, where have we heard that before? Lifting and lightening his forehand, becoming light and mobile. Notice that the hindquarters take more weight before you lift the front end up. It's, it's, they're both part of the same body, but they, you can't have one without the other. You can't pull the horse's head up <clears throat> and have collection if the back end is not lowering. Collection is natural for horses and often seen when they're playing or showing off. In a collected gait, the strides are shorter but more energetic and active. Again, this is another important point here. All joints of the hind leg flex to a greater degree and the lumbosac lumbosacral joint opens, tipping the croup downward, so it's, it's tipping that, that hip underneath, the withers rise and the neck is raised in a graceful arch with the pole the highest point and the face slightly in front of the vertical. Okay, very simple. This sounds pretty similar to the other description. Here, um, here's another quote. Again, I love this. Collection must not be confused with head carriage. Let me say that again. Collection must not be confused with head carriage, which is the height, posture, and angle of the head and neck. While a horse may arch his neck and flex the pole until his face is vertical, this by itself does not produce engagement of the hindquarters. Lifting of the withers or the balance required for true collection. In fact, a horse may be strung out with his back hollow and its withers down, his hind legs disengaged, even if his head is vertical. This right here. Guys, this is what I'm talking about. What people in the gated world call collection is just pulling the nose in. It is not collection. Uh, one more area here, uh, a horse, so this is under a section called hollow false collection or behind the bit. The horse moves with a hollow back and poor engagement, but his neck is arched and his head behind the vertical. This basically describes every gated horse out there and most gated horses in the show ring. I don't care what breed. Instead of flexing at the pole, the flexion is farther back, causing a broken neck in which the pole is not the highest point of the neck. This often happens at the third vertebra and it's something that I will probably be talking about in the future. Uh, and then she goes on to talk about how it's an irregular rhythm and, and it applies a little bit more to trotting horses, but it still applies. So that book right there tells you collection is not just the head. Okay, another one. Complete Guide to Dressage by Jenny Lorison Clark. Again, I've not read this whole thing, but looked through it. And here's what she says. In collection, the horse is expected to be his most agile. His hind legs should give him plenty of impulsion. His steps should be higher and more mobile with the joints of the quarters and hind legs well bent. There's that talking about that the joints should be bending, not just stepping under far. 
The neck should be arched with a continuous curve running from the withers to the pole. The head should be just in front of the vertical, which alters slightly throughout the step. It, it, the head moves. It's not fixed. The horse should have potential energy of a coiled spring, but without showing any signs of mental tension. And I like that she points that out, that it shouldn't have signs of mental tension. It should be relaxed, which a lot of dressage in the competitive world needs to learn. Here's another quote uh, where she's talking about, like, uh, so this is a, a shot of her, let's see, showing what it looks like early on how it looks different at the beginning, and then as they get better and better, they get shorter. So, finally, as he becomes sufficiently supple and well-trained to perform the advanced movements of Piaf and Passage, you can see how the angle from nose to hindquarters to foot has become considerably more acute. Uh, training to this stage takes some years and cannot be rushed. It is important that the horse is well balanced at every stage of training. Otherwise, it will be impossible for him to progress towards ultimate collection elevation. She said years. So many gated people will tell you that their two-year-old is collected, but all they mean is they brought the nose in. Okay, got another one. This one I have read and complete. This is called The Complete Training of Horse and Rider by Awa Padaski, and I really enjoyed this book. It talks a lot about some really good stuff. Uh, I knew this quote was in here. <laughs> okay. Collection. A horse in collection must step with his hind legs well under his body, which can be recognized by the fact that the tracks of the hind feet come into or in front of those of the forefeet. Now, it is important to note that walking horses and a lot of gated horses do this, but they don't drop the, the hind end down. So it's both. You have to have the hind leg step well under, but that hind end has to be lowered and all the joints have to be bending. This will make the horse arch his back correctly and carry his head higher, thus becoming shorter in his body. And then I underline these quotes. It requires an increased bend of the joints of the hind legs and further physical training of the horse. Collection is necessary for advanced training as it makes the hind quarters carry a greater proportion of the weight and thus relieves the forehand. In this way, it will also prevent the horse from wearing out his forelegs prematurely. Correct collection will be possible only when the horse is straight, balanced, and in contact with the bit. Collection must be obtained by pushing the hindquarters toward the reins, which remain applied. The compression shortening of the horse must be produced by pushing forward from behind, not pulling back with the reins, which is what gated people do. They pull on the reins. The latter would create incorrect collection. The hind feet of the horse would not track up to the forefeet. Okay, there's another one. Okay, dressage formula by Eric F. Herberman, I think. So I say that. Dressage formula. He has two parts that I want to read. One that I want to talk about is he talks about the six major guidelines for correct riding and training. Okay. Uh, and he lists them and I, you can see I highlighted them. So he says they are in this order. Rhythm, relaxation, contact, straightness, impulsion, collection. And we're going to talk about this in just a minute with the training pyramid for dressage, how collection is the very last thing we work on and relaxation is always at least the second, uh, which is super important because so many people want to say like, oh, we're doing collection and we, we just started training. It's like, no, you need to do rhythm, relaxation, contact, straightness, impulsion before you ever even think about the word collection. If you don't have those down, which a lot of uh, the books say, if you don't have those things down, so here it even says, one must achieve each single requirement before the next step can be attained. There must be a boringly even correct rhythm before relaxation or unconstraint and the apparent onset of laziness will be reached. But basically he says you cannot have collection without doing the other five things. Okay, and then in his section on collection here, he has, the term collection is quite carelessly used to mean gather your horse up, put it together. In other words, put the horse on the aids. The horse is a brief, oh, here's a brief description of both context, concepts. Collection, and then he talks about on the aids being uh, some training. Collection itself, however, is a state attained only after many years of systematic gymnastic work and manifests itself in a shorter, higher, rounder stride, which has been achieved solely through forward impulse, meaning you're not making the horse um, 
prance in place. It's it's by going forward and the horse now starts to go forward and up. He now starts to actually go into that. True collection is marked by a clear lowering of the croup because of the deeply bent and engaged haunches that carry more weight. We keep hearing that. This depth of bending is the result of the elasticity of the three major joints. I like that he breaks it down. Hip, stifle, and hock. This cannot be achieved without suppleness through the whole horse. Boom. You know, I'd do a mic drop if I could. Oh, I have two more books. Uh, okay, so this is Dressage and Harmony by Walter Zettel. This is, uh, he's a pretty big name. Again, I'm not sure if I've read all this. So he has the seven elements of training as well. His are rhythm, relaxation, contact, schwung, which describes the back being in relaxation and good swinging movement. Straightness, suppleness, and collection. And once again, collection is last. Let me read what he says about collection. Collection is the highest step in our staircase of training. The highest. Did you do everything else, guys? Then don't use the word collection. It must be built squarely on the foundations of the previous six elements, since to a major extent represents the distillation of the previous elements in a concentrated expression of the greatest harmony between horse and rider. It involves lowering and increased engagement of the hindquarters that allow them to come forward under the weight of the rider. This elevates and lightens the forehand and makes possible the seemingly effortless execution of the smallest school figures or the brilliant extended movements. While the rider will have a feeling of riding more and more uphill, the end result will be both horse and rider truly in heaven. Okay. All right. This is my last one, but this is my coup de grace. So this book gets mentioned all the time. This is Easy Gated Horses by Lee Ziegler. I've not actually read all of it, but everything I've read says, I agree with what she says. And she says a fair amount on collection. <clears throat> And actually, wait, wait, where is it? I thought I had a little bit more here. Okay. <clears throat> she talks about, if you have her book, you can go read it. Uh, she talks about the three general back and body positions. Round, a tightened dorsal ligament system with strong abdominal muscles and flexed hind legs, combining to lower the hindquarters from the lumbrosacral junction. Sounds like collection. Neutral, a working dorsal ligament system functioning without being stretched through the lowering of the hindquarters and with no downward flexion of the lumbral sacral junction. Balanced. Hollow, a relatively slack dorsal ligament system combined with slack abdominal muscles and no sustained downward flexion at the lumbral sacral joint. And she includes pictures, uh, drawings, here we go, you can see there, uh, for round, hollow, and neutral. <clears throat> um, okay, so she goes on, and I could read all of this. Uh, so I'm going to read just parts of it. But if you have this book, go and read, uh, assuming they're all the same, starting on page 34. The horse. So this is under the rounded collected position. The horse rounds his back and starts to collect his body by tight, by, she's so right, by tightening his abdominal muscles, causing his pelvis to tip downward from the lumbrosacral junction and increasing the tension in his ligament system. She says this comes from the core, not from the nose and the head. As a result, in the flexion of his spine, the base of the neck lifts and eventually the entire neck and head will also rise. Eventually. While tension increases in his ligament system, his large back muscles become more elastic, working to transfer efficiently the energy developed from his lower hindquarters through his body. There are many degrees of collection possible, from the slightly raised back of a horse just beginning to come from the neutral position to a completely rounded frame of a horse working in Piaf. Okay, agreed. Ease, and then this should have gated horses here. Easy gated horses do not reach the degree of roundness necessary for collected trot work, but they don't need to be collected like you do for dressage, let alone needed for correct piaf. Because the easy gates require a type of elasticity in the back that is reduced when there is this much tension in the ligament cable system, the same elasticity that allows non-gated foals to do easy gates for a short time in their lives, Gated horses do most of their gates in the neutral to somewhat hollow position. Despite the arched necks, and I love this, this paragraph, despite the arched necks and high heads you may see in some gated horses, very few of them work with their bodies in more than a slightly rounded neutral position. To test the degree of true collection possible in any particular easy gait, ride a gated horse in his gait, then teach him to round his body correctly, raising the base of the neck, creating a bascule in his back, meaning it's up. 
and work with sustained downward flexion at the lumbral sacral junction in a truly collected position. As he becomes more round, he will generally lose his easy gait and start trotting. Absolutely agree, completely, which is actually what our goal is when we're working with pacey horses is to push them toward that round and that trot to get away from the pace. Of course, we want the easy gait. And then she goes on, uh, she gives a nice um, drawing here of rounded versus you know, neutral or hollow, which the difference is kind of subtle. There you go. Um, but it's really true. So go read this. Um, so I like this. I'm going to read this. Uh, indications that a horse has been working in an inverted position, a sagging belly with no muscle tone in the abdominal muscles, flat muscles on either side of the backbone, a prominent spine, some downward sway in the back, heavy, heavy muscling on the underside of the neck, a hunter's bump or not at the highest point of the croup over the lumbosacral joint. Uh, and then she goes on. I mean, do you guys want me to keep reading? I'll keep reading from this because I totally agree. Um, okay, Chrissy, I'm going to read through some comments there. Chrissy says, I feel like racking horses naturally have difficulties with true self-carriage. Well, if we're talking about speed racking, uh, nobody even bothers, so we don't actually know. Um, if you push a horse too round, they will definitely get more trotty. Chris says, love your rants. Training people is much harder than horses. You are wonder doing a wonderful job. Okay, don't worry. I have some information coming about how to work on this. Ivy, can you add the names of the books to the common area after the session? Yes, Gay, okay, I absolutely will. Uh, I do not agree that contact with the bit is required for collection. Well, Chrissy, I don't agree either. I believe that the author was trying to say that, not that it was uh, needed for collection, but you do need it for initial collection because a goal should always be self-carriage, which would be on a loose rein. So in that sense, I agree with you. Wendy says, thanks for your help. Uh, Patty says, swung, and it's actually, it's actually like schwung, it's S-C-H-W something or other, and it's German, and it's schwung, and it, and it means that relaxation and elasticity where the horse is lifted and swinging through his back. You should write a book, Collection Balance for Dummies. <laughs> I love that idea, Gay. Uh, Chrissy says, if that's the case, no Western horse can be collected based on that book's definition. Well, again, I agree that being uh, having contact is not necessary, but I think most Western horses are not actually collected. They're balanced. Um... Susan or Susanna says, love Lee Ziegler's book and Eloi Podosky's. I think your spelling is right, so don't worry. Yes, um, I'm going to read this uh, definitely because I definitely think um, there's so much. And like her gates are correct. And also, uh, it's very interesting. I'm going to do a review on this one because when you compare the gates, like she talks about ambling and the rocky gates and, and the Paso gates. But if you watch the footfalls they are the exact same, which proves what I say over and over again, which is that the gates are basically the same, like the, the saddle rack, the Icelandic tolt, the walk, the, not the rack or the single foot, that is a little bit different based on just speed, but uh, the, the Pasfino and the Corto, they're all the same movement. The breeds just want you to believe that they're different so they can say that they're special. Uh, and then Jan says, how do you get a horse to drop the croup? Well, again, Jan, if you listen from the beginning, it is a part of preparing the horse gymnastically, which I'll talk about in a sec. Uh, so it is not like, oh, they drop their croup. It's a teaching the horse to engage their core, to lift the base and to slowly do this. And again, those books said that this takes years, years, okay, uh, to get a horse strong enough to be able to do this. All right, now let's continue on. Here we go on the bit. This is a little video that shows a horse on the bit, but no collection. It's strung out. The back is a little bit hollow. Uh, and you can see the hind legs are pushing back rather than up. In the second picture, you can see that the horse is on the bit, but starting to lift the base of the neck, lift the back. And really you can see all the flexion in the joints as he's stepping underneath. And that back leg isn't pushing back so much. It's pushing up. Long and low, which is what I start to teach with gated horses to get them to start lifting the base of the neck and lift the back. And then the bottom is what we absolutely don't want, which we see many gated horses in, especially in the show ring, and we've probably all seen it. Okay, moving on. Dressage pyramid. Again, I want to point out that 
The bottom is the most important thing. Going up, collection is the last thing you work on. So you have to be working on rhythm, relaxation, connection, impulsion, and straightness before you even think about tucking that croup under, okay? I'll go back to my stack of books, which I will, yes, I will list every single one of those in the description in a minute. And so what can we do? So in the description, I do show a video about um, how to start doing the leg yield because I'm going to show you this video. This is from a few years ago, um, actually like almost six years ago, but I'm doing a leg yield with a Rocky Mountain horse here. And at the, this is just at the walk. So the leg yield is the horse bent in the opposite direction. Now it's not perfect because uh, he's overbent and like there the hip is leading, but you see that he's crossing over. He's going forward and sideways. So diagonal, which is important, is his legs, all of his legs, so he's, he lost his straightness there, should be stepping over and forward. And he's, he's, he was a nice horse. I, I loved working with this guy. Um, <laughs> he's not perfect, but he can totally do it. And I have a link in the description that shows. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gate back down to the other end and then I'm going to, I'm gonna have him gate and do a little bit of a leg yield. And he's not as good. You don't see as much crossing over, but he can still do it. So head down, that is the beginning. Head down and forward is the beginning of getting collection. And then the next step that can really help your horse is a leg yield. <clears throat> there's lots of things you can do. You can do transitions, you can do pulls, you can do, I mean, there's so much. If you look up dressage training and you can find a good dressage trainer. Um, so here's a little bit of gait. I'm gonna ask him to leg yield over and there's not as much crossing over, but he does step over and sideways. So he does leg yield both directions. It's just not as, uh, there's not as much step over as if he was trotting or if he was walking. So you want to get started with collection. Let's start by reading some of these books, getting an idea of what collection is. Let's work on softness. That's really important. Let's work on forward, not being scared to let your horse go forward and go in rhythm. And then practice leg yields. Leg yields will actually help if you have a trotty or a pacey horse. It will absolutely help. And... I don't know how to say this person, but she says hi from Iceland. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, let me just go in and say, I hate the word collection when it's used with gated horses. Unless you're doing gated dressage and you have done all of these steps, you have to understand most of the gates are not done in collection. And if you add collection, you make the horse trotty, which again, if we have a pacey horse, we want him to get toward the trot. So we get him out of the pace. But don't use the word collection. It doesn't, it absolutely does not mean bringing the nose in. It never means that. Never, ever. Again, I looked at four other books other than this and those didn't disagree with it. They just didn't talk about collection and give a definition. You probably could look up a lot of books and they would all say the same thing. That collection is not bringing the nose in or resisting or pulling the head in. It is about the hind end and the core. And if you're using collection, I, and I kind of, I do jump on people that comment and say, well, my horse is collected. And I'm like, it's no, no. If your horse is collected, your horse is probably trotting. And I don't, I won't believe it until I see it. And most of the time, you don't actually mean collection. You mean bringing the nose in, which is not collection. If you guys want to, um, <laughs> the other, the other, the other thing that I want to do a rant about probably next week would be the half halt because so many people don't know what a half halt is. It's kind of similar to collection. I'm probably going to go through a bunch of books and find what an actual definition of a half halt is and say, you guys are all wrong. Liz Ward says, will laterals on the ground help? We aren't under saddle yet. Absolutely. If you've got the head down, if the horse has the head up and the back hollow, lateral work does not help. So, but it will really help if you do lateral work on the ground uh, and do head down and get the horse stronger and backing up with the head down. All of those engage the core. You want to get the horse to drop the croup. If anybody watched my, uh, Jan said, you know, how do we get the horse to drop the croup? If anybody watched my winter training video where I taught my mare to back up to the round bale the first time, uh, you will see that when she backs up and leans, she tucks her hip and drops her croup a little. And obviously it's not in forward motion, but that's the beginning. You can use a school halt, which is a halt. And then they lean back without stepping backwards and they tuck their hip and that's the very beginning. But all of these things are exercises. Uh, John Evans said, if your horse is in true collection, driving from the rear into your hands, the head will naturally set into a beautiful frame. Absolutely agree with John. 
Totally agree. Lynn says it takes a long time to get true collection. Unfortunately, it's an overused word. I would say it's an overused word, especially in the gated world. It's probably overused everywhere else, but especially in the gated world. And I wish we could just get rid of that word from the definition of gated horses because most are not actually collected and they don't need to be collected to gate. <sighs> I know a gated dressage trainer down towards Rusk, by the way, um, Chrissy says. Well, sure, a gated dressage is a wonderful thing. I think if everybody did gated dressage, their horses, they wouldn't even need me. But you can't do collection until you do all those other things first. Like in the training pyramid here, the dressage pyramid, you have to have rhythm, relaxation, connection, impulsion, straightness. Then you can get collection. Now, during all of these times where you're working on rhythm, relaxation, connection, impulsion, straightness, you're probably getting a little bit of collection, but it only comes as a result of thorough training. Uh, Joanne says, hi from Cape May, New Jersey. It's horrible for how many years I was taught that collection was a position of head and neck. I, I wish I could wipe that away uh, more than anything else. If we could get rid of that, the fact that that means collection, I would be so happy. Anyway, uh, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to comment and I'll probably reply uh, and try to get that. If this video was fun, please share. It is a rant. Um, there are, I will share the, the links or the names of the books and the authors in the description so you guys can check that out later. And I don't see any more questions. If you have more questions, I would love to hear it. Thank you guys so much for watching and tolerating my rant because I really, it bothers me and people ask about it all the time. I'm going to share this video just because I'm so sick of it. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great weekend. Take care.